So, got a Tucson it's in this box. And we're going to get it out of here. We're going to check it in so we can check it out. Let's get after it. Okay. This is a TS. Come on now. TS-116. I believe it's an older model. Let's get it out of this bag. Usually when they're wrapped like this, I'm going to guess it's pretty oily too. I'll be able to get all that oil off of it. We're going to take it apart, give it a good check in, and we're going to check it out. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Pretty oily cool. Different. Looks like it's got a good texture on it. Hey, let's get that oil off of it. But first, let's put this stuff away. And then we'll get after it. Okay. Tell. <clears throat> oh, it's got some good texture. At least it's biting on the towel, so I think it does. All right, we got that initial lathering off of there. We'll come back and wrap up, but... I mean, that does not feel like what it, I think, what I thought it was going to feel like. It feels, I mean, there's a, a gritty surface there. It's kind of cool. Let's, let's get that out of there. Let's see what's up. Ooh, weak, weak detent. And a really small lockup. Yeah, look at this lockup. I'm already paying attention to that. I think it's going to hold. I don't have any concerns about that. Yeah, that's it's definitely going to hold. But look, it's kind of looks like a pterodactyl. Is that a pterodactyl? Ooh, there's some trash in there. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, there's something going on in there. I mean, I don't know if that detent's weak or if we're just not set up right, but probably not going to run this a bunch. Might as well just get in it and let's see if we can't get that figured out. Yeah, let's let's go for it. So, hold on. Let's let's look here real quick. So, it's a Max Tuchuk uh design in 14c 28n and that's a ts116 okay yeah uh, i'm interested let's uh let's get in here i definitely am Interested to see if I can improve this action because it's a hot mess. It's got a weak detent and it's gritty. Some kind of grit. Something going on there. We should come apart now. Unless there's a hidden screw. And there definitely could be because that backspacer could be hiding it. I do see a lot of skeletonized liner in there. Yeah, I, th I think I'm going to have to pull that pocket clip. But it's all T8s. Ooh, that was in there good. It's got a recessed clip with these round head screws. So they kind of poke up a little bit. But it's definitely recessed down into that G10. Let's see. Yeah, I don't think that had anything to do with it. Nope. 
Yeah, lots of oil, so I'm glad it's coming apart. We'll get all that cleaned up and out of there. But it's these steel liners. They're just tight over these uh, spacers. These, uh, I guess it's like a barrel spacer. Everything's just real tight. There we go. These gonna come out. Well, that one is. What about this one? That one's being stubborn. All right. Blade. Tiny little bearings. That may have something to do with our action. I definitely want to get these items out because of the amount of oil that was behind the other one. There we go. Come on. Ooh, tight. It's tight in that scale. I'm pretty sure that's what's up. Let's try this one. Almost. that out so do this a little more methodical we'll put a screw in it and then I'll pop that screw there it is it's loose now that way we don't strip no threads we don't have any issues and that freed up this one there we go yeah I just got enough oil in there that I'm glad I'm getting in there I don't really see what was causing that grit, so I'm going to be looking for that right now. I don't see it. Hmm. Wow. Is that an aggressive blade or what? Pretty cool. G10 scales. I, I'm saying blue, but the more I'm looking at this, like the, this is blue, these little pieces. But I think that's purple. I think it's a purple knife. All right, well the question is, should I increase that detent while I got this apart? I guess that's one question, right? It's not the question. Um, I think I'm going to. I'm going to put just a little bit on it. See if I can not improve it a little bit. Create a little pressure so that it'll snap out of there. Let's get these bearings done. Yeah, these are tiny little bearings. I don't know. I mean, for a minute, I was hopeful that I was really going to be able to improve this, but I'm looking at it. I don't really see anything. Nothing's jumping out at me. But it wouldn't be the first time I got surprised in a deal like that. Let me take care of this detent real quick. Let me get a reference point of where that's at. It's just about a millimeter inside of that scale. So I'm going to add a little bit. Yeah, not much. I mean, maybe I'm at a millimeter and a half now. So we'll see. All right. Let's get it back together. Nothing's captured here, so it should be pretty easy. Yeah, that one was tight coming out. There it is. It's funny. It could be so tight. And then you put it back together and it'll literally just fall out. Like you can't keep it in. Hmm. There we go. And stop pin. Put 
that on. Hmm. It's pretty tight on that pivot pin. Which could mean something, could mean absolutely nothing. feels pretty tight. We'll see. Yeah, well, that's not helping. That same spacer is not wanting to get in that hole. back up well definitely I'm going to take some tension off of this it might help me there there wasn't a lot on it we got it there. Let's put a couple of these screws in and see if we can't have this make sense. Yeah, I felt it square up right there in my hand. I think I've got it wrong screw in there. I think it's this one. <laughs> That's okay though. This is the right thread size. Just the wrong head size. There we go. Yeah. Good to go. Let's put our pocket clip on. Well, let me hold up. Because, oh, yeah, that's better. So let's check this. I mean, it feels better. I'm going to try to, I'm going to run it a few times, and then I'm going to try to fail it. I think I'm going to put a dab of oil. I mean, that action's way better, I can tell you. Let me get just a little tiny bit on that detent ball. It's almost dropped shut. Check it for play. It's got a little bit. Yeah, that was loose. Better. All right, I'm gonna try to fail it. 
Yeah, I can definitely fail it. But it's running way better. It doesn't take much to get it to go to run. Let's try a Spidey flick. Yep. I wonder if I can get my thumb in there. Mm-hmm. All right, let's finish putting it together. And then we'll check it out. This is an odd little duck. It's definitely one that I want in my collection. You know, that's... That's one of the things about all these Tucsons is a lot of these, like, like, I, I buy all these, but I buy all my other knives too. But the other knives, there's more of an intention that it's actually a knife that I'm going to use or carry or would like to, you know, there's something about the design, the look. The blade shape, the whatever, and Tucson kind of gets a pass there. You know, I don't look at all these models and go, "Ooh, I want to carry that." A lot of them I look at and I go, "Ooh, I got to put that in my collection." It's one that I missed, you know, years ago, or um, yeah, blade centered. I mean, everything looks pretty awesome on this thing. And it's not taking much for that to run. I'd, I'd say that it's also going to get better with time, but I'm not sure how that's going to happen because the bearings are seated, everything's solid. You know, the bearings are riding up against hardened steel. Uh, these liners, and then the hard, I mean, the liners kind of have a stonewash to them. Good access to the lock bar. Um, I don't have any issues with that. I mean, you know, final word on this action is it's pretty darn good right now. It's not, it's not drop shut, but it's not far off. Just a little bit of coaxing and that'll run. All the opening methods work really good. Even that back one, like I'm, I'm touching it really light and it's running just shy of fully there. Yeah, it doesn't take much, but if I try, it flies out there. Yeah, it's in good shape. So, I mean, I like the action. Let's uh, let's check ergonomics. I'm going to get this fingerprint off this 14C. Because, man, is that a good-looking blade. That is really good-looking. I like it. Kind of an odd duck handle with this blue G10 and or purple and then the blue... Like I say, kind of odd, but I don't know. Maybe grow on me. So the grip in hand, uh, right out of the gate, I'm going to say there's some jimping here that's aggressive and sharp, carries over into the liners. And so this space really locks in the thumb. There's good jimping on the back here. So the the my index finger on my grip hand locks in really tight. There's a nice slender profile the pocket clips hidden up in here where it belongs and so the result is this is a this is a better than confident grip i mean it's leaning towards very confident and with the pokiness i mean how sharp is that like a, a sewing needle Whew, look at the look at how tiny the point is on that thing so my point being is how pointy that is. Like, what resistance is that going to run into? So, I, all told, this thing's up here. Like, if this is confident, this is not so confident, and this is very confident, we're leaning here. So, I'm going to give this my vote of confidence for being being able to be considered a backup, self-defense, or even a primary self-defense weapon. I mean, I think this could qualify just because of the grip and this blade. I mean, you could you could handle yourself here. You could definitely protect yourself. Um, it's got this forward choil so you can, you know, choke up. Um, I mean, you could cut all day with this. 
I mean, I'd be a little concerned about really digging that tip in because it's it's coming to such a fine point that I don't think it, I mean, it's probably fairly delicate. Like this isn't a heavy work knife. That point most definitely is not. Um, Let's check the pocket clip. I don't really have any concerns. I think it's going to run like the wind. Is that ride like the wind or run like the wind? I think it's ride like the wind. But yeah, it's over that thick material instantly. And so boom, it's in. Leaves just a little gopher poking his head out of the hole there. Just the tiniest little bit. I mean, okay. Um, it's got a good bite, good grip. It's going to be where you put it when you want it. Yeah, it fits in there well, and that pocket clip runs. It's a one hand in, one hand out all day long. What about safety? So it's got this nice long back spacer, but did they did they stop it short? Because I see this blade down in here. I think I can touch it. I mean, I really got to try, but I can touch just that tip right there. But I'm not going to fail it for that, you know. And, of course, these are, these are just my opinions. You know, when I say, oh, that's a pass or that's a fail. I mean, who am I? I'm stupid, man. I don't, you know. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just me. But I'm going to pass that because, I, like, right there, I can't touch it. So I, I have to dig in like really kind of press in to just catch that corner uh the tip yeah i mean i can get that tip oh this poor thing it's just got like strike after strike i mean i'm gonna say that it's you know for by my standard it's a fail safety wise because you can definitely get this tip like if this was in my back right corner and i reached back to get into this pocket, I could absolutely get my finger right there. Because, you know, when you're reaching in for your knife, you're not like, oh, where's my finger? You're just digging in. And man, this tip right here, if you just dig in, I mean, I, I get it every time. So yeah, that's a fail. Pocket clips a pass. The backspacer, I'm going to be nice and pass it, but... This tip, it's exposed, and you could cut yourself on it in your pocket. Uh, I wonder if it's sharp. Maybe someday I'll get some accreditation, and I'll be the official safety pass passer, like OSHA of knives. Yeah, it's pretty darn sharp. I mean, feels like it's just got maybe the slightest little burr on it. And uh, it won't cost you any time, so I'll be right back. Okay, about three passes on each side. Yeah, that's all it needed. Just got a tiny, tiny little burr. And it needed me to say, no, you got to go. And uh, about three passes. And... Uh, I've done it before, but hey, real quick, all I did was one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe. Like that. And uh, the result is ferociously sharp. I mean, it'll whittle this fine little phone book paper. So, yeah, sharp. All right, price and availability. And uh, we'll get out of class early today. Uh, let me think. It's a Tucson TS-116. Let me share. Yeah, TS-116, 14C28N. And beautiful blade. I love that blade. So I don't see any current uh, eBay auctions for this, but White Mountain Knives has it for like 40 something and then 10% off. I think it comes in at like $37. So 37 bucks, man. 14C28N, this beautiful satin blade. 
I'm digging it, man. And, I mean, once cleaned up, the action's pretty solid on this thing. It runs pretty good. I mean, if I was going to say anything, well, it definitely needed to be taken apart and cleaned. And, you know, like I am, I added a little bit to that detent. So it needed a little maintenance and uh, could maybe put a little tension on this pocket clip. That wouldn't hurt it. So, yeah, anyways, appreciate you watching.